Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Van build time again. Things are getting really serious now. Uh, we're gonna be like getting into the real stuff, doing flooring, walls, insulation. I got parts coming in the mail left and right. But the first thing I've gotta do before we get into any of that is install this jump seat that I talked about in our last video. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. When we did our swiveling seats in the front, we've got this jump seat for Henry that we need to get installed. And I've been thinking about this one a bunch. I've gotta figure out how I'm going to fit these transit rails it's from a Ford Transit van here in our E350. And I think I've got it figured out. I'm just gonna jump into it and I'll explain it as we go. Now this was my first time making some sparks in the new shop and for the safety freaks don't worry I wore protective eyewear most of the time and I was sure to point it at this giant pile of boxes. So I had to modify these rails to get them to fit and what I'm doing is I'm cutting off these alignment pins that were on the bottom that don't fit the chassis of our van. And then just taking measurements I, I attempted to use some of the original bolt holes for one rail transferred the measurement of the factory bolt holes to my right hand side rail and then drilled out an existing hole to make it wider and added a new hole. Once I was able to confirm that this matched the whole pattern of the floor, I could move on to the next step, which was actually to add a riser underneath this rail so it would meet up with the height of the other rail. And I'll show you more detail on that in a second. As soon as I had my metal shim cut to length, I was able to just transfer the whole pattern from the seat rail directly onto the shim and drill that out. All right, so what I've done is I've modified this rail to fit the existing holes from the factory seats in the E350 by enlarging an existing hole and adding a new hole here. Then I've cut some quarter inch steel, which was a pain to cut. Um, and I've drilled a matching hole pattern on it. And this is gonna act as a spacer to lift this rail up because the bottom of the fan sort of corrugated like a truck bed for strength and the factory holes are down in the bottom, but we're gonna drill the other rail through at the top. And so this is basically a riser. We're gonna go try and fit this into the factory bolt holes now and make sure it worked. And if so, we'll move on to the other rail, which in this case is just gonna be drilled through the body tub. And then uh, there's like a frame cross member underneath it that hits right where the other bolts go. I'll show you from the bottom. I've just gotta get this one installed and then like connect the seat rails up so I can put the seat in place and measure exactly where the other rail should go. That's how you know it's special. All right, it took a little bit of coercion and some cleanup of the old uh, threads on these, but I got this thing bolted down, like super bolted down. So that's one rail. Now I'm going to try and install the seat into this one and get the other one placed so I can mark some holes and start drilling holes in this thing. In case I haven't already mentioned it, the plan here is to, I'm using the factory bolt holes for this rail and on the next rail I'm bolting through with Loctite and a nylon locking nut under the body tub. If you've been watching our videos, you know that we did some sponsored stuff for Anchor Solix. This video is not sponsored by them, but they were super chill. And after we got back from the Save Expo, they sent us 
one of their C800 batteries. It's the one that has the little lights. These have been so damn handy. I'm just taking them under the van with me. Uh, let me show you what we're gonna do down here. Well, there's our pilot hole. I'm concerned about that. I think it's too tight up against the frame here. So what a lot of people do on these, I watched a bunch of videos and everyone just kind of has to wing it based on what seats they have and what fan they have, um, is they'll put like a gusset plate, piece of steel here. So that like in the event of an accident, it makes sense. You know what, the bolt's just ripping through this kind of thin sheet metal. I'm trying to do what Ford did, which is actually put, this is the factory bolt points for the seats, is actually put them on this frame strut or support or whatever it is, this cross member uh, with a washer on it and use that as the sort of leverage point for the bolts. So you can see here I marked out the ideal spot on our rail. Um, and it's just really tight to this. I don't think I can fit a half inch bolt in between that hole in the frame. So I'll have to seal that with silicone while I come up with a new plan. I'm trying to do something similar back here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is just drill a hole and come backward with it a little bit. There's just not really a choice. But to come back here and try and get as even with this one as I can and see if that'll fit the rails. Okay, it's the next morning here on the seat install and I'm happy to say we solved the problem. It is just one of those things that you get to uh, point like this in a project with a thing that's giving you difficulty. Sometimes you just gotta put the camera down and get it solved. And that's what I ended up doing. Uh, and then Paige was able to come up with me this morning and spend some time uh, helping me bolt this in. So let's go uh, take a look at what we did. So the shim under the rail worked perfectly and, and got them super level. And then I just had to widen some of the holes on our rails to get our bolt to hit this cross member right in the right spot. But you can see it's really nicely snug in there. And of course the other bolts went straight to the factory bolt holes. And so it's uh, it's very, very secure. And the reason why we wanted to go with a seat like this was because of the integrated seat belt. We just didn't want to have to mess with that. Now the next thing on my list is to start taking off this ladder rack on the roof. I have decided that I'm not gonna try and repurpose it to build a rack out of it. And it's because the brackets actually come up at an angle to get over the curved roof. I've found some good roof racks that are inexpensive, that fit this type of van, that simply just have taller brackets and a straight line, which is gonna be perfect because I wanna mount solar panels and things like that. And I don't wanna be dealing with curves and, and all that stuff. And there's a couple spots where this roof rack, when it was installed, they just screwed through the rails into the rain gutters. And so I'll probably need to patch that with some Bondo, sand it and prime it. And then that'll be ready to be fixed along with the rest of the paintwork. So yeah, let's get this yanked off. I'm gonna sell it on Facebook Marketplace and see if we can offset the cost of some new roof racks. I've been in the darkness for 40 days. All right, we got the roof rack off, and I know that I'm doing lots of magic wardrobe changes in between scenes in this video, and that's because video logistics are kind of difficult right now because there's a bunch of crap going on, and it's good, it's good stuff. Now, I noticed while I was up there that there's a lot of rust around the rain gutter rim, and so I'm probably gonna hit that with a hand sander, um, kind of like I did on some of the paint damage over here, 
and put a coat of primer over it to keep that from rusting further and uh, address that with the rest of the paint issues later. At this point, this thing's pretty much road ready. It's got a seat for Henry in it. He's never taken a ride in it, so we're gonna have to take him for a joy ride. And now we're ready to do the subfloor and the walls and insulation, which the insulation is here. We're gonna go buy some wood in the van this weekend to start on all of that. It's getting really exciting. I've decided what I'm gonna do for the roof rack. I've found a much simpler ladder rack that's just straight bars. And the bars have slots in them where you can like slide a, a bolt into it and have the bolt stick out and then you can bolt anything to it. And that's how we're gonna put our solar panels eventually back on the roof up here. But that'll be a project for our electrical in another video. All right, it's time to get the inside of this thing cleaned up a little bit more. There's still some odds and ends and bolts that need to be taken out. Vacuum it out so that we are ready to start our interior framing. Just a quick update on Wilder Mountain for you guys, because I don't think we've done that in a while. I have the van at the house, and the reason why is we pulled all the carpet out in the living room area here. So if you've been following for a long time, super OG fans, you'll probably remember when we bought this house, we had wall-to-wall -wall white carpet. But yeah, that's all been pulled out now, and the carpet pad, and the carpet scraps have all been sitting in the garage. And like one thing that's been really handy about the van since we got it is I've been using it also like a truck while it's empty. And so it's like our last chance to do it because we're about to put subfloors and walls in and it's gonna be too nice to use as our junk hauler. Uh, but I am gonna be taking all of our scrap carpet and stuff to a city trash drop off thing tomorrow. Can you explain our city's trash drop-off thing that we're doing tomorrow because I think it's really cool. I just want to enjoy this. The last cookie. <laughs> Can I play it? We're having a YouTube heavy day, everybody. Twice a year, our city has these bulky waste cleanup days and um, there's one in the spring and one in the fall and you have to bring your stuff to the transfer station but it's free to drop off things of any size. So when you have like an old couch or something, you can like bring it and dispose of it for free, which is really nice. Um, and it's more complicated than that, but that explains it, I think. It's pretty cool. It's like junk collection amnesty offered by the city. And it's awesome. It just means that we pile shit up in our garage for months going like that oh. day's coming up. It's really important in rural areas that don't have like great access to those kinds of like dumps necessarily or trash pickup um, because otherwise trash gets thrown in the woods. Especially rural areas of Arkansas where people just like have a dump and it's like that spot off the road where everyone dumps their shit. Yeah. I won't tell the stories of what we did with trash when I was a kid, but it's not good. This is such a good thing. <laughs> I drove by my childhood dump the other day. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to do with the floors long term, but right now we're just living with the bare concrete that was very well hand trialed and actually almost kind of feels like finished polished concrete floors. Maybe we'll do other floors one day. It's just, they ended up being in really good shape and it's like, you know, we're, we're always living in part time in a project, you know? We can tolerate this for probably a decade. So we've got the van up here on the mountain. So we can finally get rid of this pile of junk. But of all the things we moved to the shop, one of them, one of the things that we've forgotten to bring up there every time is our shop vac. And so it's here and uh, I'm going to get this all cleaned out so we can fill it with crap so we can clean it out again. But it's really a mess in there. And then this is really like our last, you know, haul stuff with the van because we are so close to doing subfloors on this thing. I can't explain it, even though the shop is ours and it's our shop and it's fun to be in the shop and stuff like that, something about having this thing up at Wilder Mountain just makes it feel so much more real.
There comes a time where we have to end the video. Now it's that time. <laughs> Casey accomplished a lot. He put the seat in for Henry, and he put the rack not on there. And put the rack on the ground. On the ground. <laughs> no, really, these are like big steps, and we're uh, we've unlocked now being able to. I feel like we're road worthy. The whole family can get in this thing and drive around, and we can take it anywhere we want. And it's like really is. I said it was a clean slate before. It. Before. <laughs> it's, def it's really, it's a clean slate now. I'm taking all the seat belt hangers out. I mean, this thing is ready for us to get into the interior build part. It looks really good. So be sure and subscribe. The next video in the series is going to be the subfloor as well as wall framing and insulation. We might even put the walls up and get into the ceiling work. So we'll be cutting holes in the roof. Yeah, go got a fan to go there. We'll be pulling all the electrical. I've got all the electrical. Oh yeah. It's like we're going on a wood run as soon as we load all this crap out of the garage. Did I know you have bought, we've got the fan, we've got parts. Like we're starting to be like, yeah. yeah. It's all been arriving slowly, but like there's plenty of work for us to do. So we're going to be rolling pretty quickly soon. Uh, we're, our goal is to have this thing like really livable and spend this summer doing California coast, right? Yeah, we're gonna take it all the way to the west coast. That's a big reason we're building this out is that we are not totally confident in our RV making it that far. And we're not it's confident. So, it's already crossed the Rockies a few times. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, anyway. And then the Jeep, uh, we're not confident in our ability to travel in that that far and like get along. So this feels like maybe the perfect compromise between the size of the RV and the Jeep and all that stuff. I have a sub goal of taking this thing for a trip two weeks from now. So we'll see how that pans out. Uh, we'll see. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.